<laughs> Welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop, and we're really happy to have you here today because this is part three of our series on the United States Military Medals. And today we're going to go from 1865, the end of the Civil War, or we'll look back on the Civil War, of course, at that campaign medal, and we'll go all the way up to the end of World War I in 1918. And what's going to be really interesting is you're going to see where one man opened the floodgate of campaign medals for U.S. military veterans. And that one man, of course, was Teddy Roosevelt from his service as a rough rider during the Spanish-American War. <laughs> when he became president, he said, we're going to have campaign medals for every soldier, sailor, and Marine all the way back to the Civil War. And we'll take a look at those three variations for Civil War medals. We'll also take a look at some very interesting medals like the first Navy Good Conduct Badge. And if you didn't keep it, you couldn't re-enlist. We'll also take a look at all the multiple changes that went on with the Medal of Honor. And we'll take a look at the individual campaign medals all the way from, uh, well, the Civil War, the Indian Wars, the Spanish-American War. And we'll take a look at some of, well, what do you want to call it, the application of the Monroe Doctrine and our neighbors to the South as we lead up to World War I. And we'll see the one and only time that the United States has used campaign bars on the service medal for World War I. We'll see the introduction of four new decorations, and we'll see the departure of two others. I think you're going to find this interesting, even a little history lesson, but you'll also see something very unique. You'll see, although there's a single ribbon for each campaign, the services managed to have a slightly different medallion for the Army, the Navy, and the Marine Corps. <laughs> uh, pretty neat. Okay, enough talk. Oh, by the way, if you enjoy these, please give us a thumbs up. Even better, subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. And look forward to seeing you when we go from World War I up through World War II, and that'll be number four coming shortly. Since the campaign medals, even going back to the Civil War, were not authorized till 1905, we'll start with the Navy Good Conduct Badge of 1869. It's the third oldest continuously presented award after the Army and Navy Medals of Honor. While there have been four versions of the Navy Good Conduct Medal, the 1869 medal was a Maltese cross made of nickel with the words fidelity, zeal, and obedience in a circle and USN in the center of a disc. The sailors called it the Nickel Cross. The Navy Good Conduct Medallion as we know it today was established in 1896 and the all red ribbon replaced the former red, white, and blue style. The reverse of the medal continued to bear the name of the recipient but added information such as the sailor's continuous service number, discharge date, ship's name, and date of discharge. To look at some other change in our next section on World War I to World War II. The medallion in the center of the Good Conduct Medal is the USS Constitution, which still sails every 4th of July in Baltimore Harbor. The Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal was established on 20 July 1896. The medal was originally a ribbon and medal suspended from a class bearing the words U.S. Marine Corps. The class was eliminated after World War II. I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. But the medal has remained unchanged in appearance since that time. Since its inception in 1896, the name of the recipient was engraved by hand on the reverse side of the medal until stamping the name on the medal began during World War II. During World War I, the medals were numbered on the rim. It was not until the turn of the 20th century that a host of medals were authorized to commemorate the events surrounding the Spanish-American War. This was the future President Theodore Roosevelt's Bully Little War. It produced seven distinct medals for only four months of military action. Supply had finally caught up with demand, and medals were authorized all the way back to the Civil War. During the Civil War, only two medals were authorized, the Army and the Navy Medal of Honor, and occasionally a separate medal might be stamped or authorized by a division commander for some of his own troops. The Civil War Campaign Medal is chronologically the first campaign service medal, and it was authorized in 1905 on the 40th anniversary of the Civil War. 
The blue and gray ribbon reflects the uniform colors of both U.S. and Confederate soldiers, and the Army Civil War Campaign Medal required that a soldier serve between 1861 and 1866 when President Johnson signed a proclamation officially ending the war. The Navy and Marine Corps Civil War Medals were established in June of 1908. The front of the Army Civil War Campaign Medal displays a bust of Abraham Lincoln, while the Navy and Marine Corps version depicts USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia's battle in Hampton's Roads. The reverse of the medal displays, of the Army Medal, the Civil War 1861-1865 encircled by a reef. The head of Lincoln on the Army Medal is encircled by an inscription which says, Malice towards none with charity for all. The Navy and Marine Corps versions, if you look to the right, have different backs as shown. The medal was designed by Francis Millet, a noted sculptor, and unfortunately he went down on the Titanic in 1912. The Civil War Campaign Medal was the first campaign medal authorized for Marine Corps veterans, and only about 200 of those medals were minted and numbered on the rim for Marine Corps Civil War veterans. And for today, well, today there's maybe only two dozen originally issued numbered medals, and so that makes that the rarest of all Marine Corps campaign medals. Here's something you should know about the early campaign medals that we're looking at. Uh, as you can see by this Navy campaign medal, if you look at an original issue, it's much darker. This shows the back of a Navy uh, Civil War campaign medal, and you can see how thick an original campaign medal was. And so let me show that to you to a recent restrike, and you can see it's, well, only half as thick. So when you're looking at old campaign medals, Thicker is better, and if you find one with a serial number, that's fabulous. There were no official Confederate state campaign medals, but after the war, the Daughters of the Confederacy issued a Southern Cross of Honor to all the Confederate veterans. Between 1865 and 1891, the United States Army conducted a series of running battles against the Indians in the western portion of the United States. The Indian Campaign Medal was established by the War Department in January of 1907 and was authorized for military service in any campaign against any tribe during certain periods and locations. In 1918, the Indian Campaign Medal was retroactively authorized a small five-pointed white star, 316th in diameter, for gallantry in action during the Indian Wars. These were rarely awarded, and they were called citation stars, of the very first of the medals of the Spanish-American War was the Dewey Medal. It was struck to commemorate the victory of the naval forces under the command of Commodore Dewey over the Spanish fleet at Manila Bay. Actually, the medal was called the Manila Bay Medal. The award was notable as it was the first such medal in U.S. history to be awarded to all officers and enlisted personnel present during a specific military expedition. It was also, and is, one of the handsomest American medals ever designed. And here's a good look at Admiral Dewey wearing his medal, the medal, and his flagship, the USS Olympia. His flagship is currently berthed in the Port of Philadelphia and well worth a visit. Theodore Roosevelt, an enthusiastic supporter of the military, ultimately reached the White House. He took it upon himself to legislate for the creation of medals to honor all of those who had served in America's previous conflicts. Thus, by 1908, the United States had authorized campaign medals, some retroactively for the Civil War, Indian Wars, War with Spain, the Philippine Insurrection, and the China Relief Expedition of 1901. While the Army, Navy, and Marines used the same ribbons, different medals were struck. Concurrently, the custom of wearing service ribbons on the tunic was adopted during the same time frame. Thus, the different armed forces managed to establish the principle of independence in the creation and wearing of awards that is virtually unchanged today. Let's take a quick look at each one of these medals, starting with the Spanish-American War and leading up to the beginning of World War I, and we'll start with the Army and then the Navy and Marine Corps. The first medal we'll look at is the Spanish Campaign Medal for the U.S. Army, and an original one is shown on your left, and you can see it was numbered on the rim. It was later changed to a different ribbon, which was gold and blue, because the original ribbon reflected the colors of a Spanish national flag, and that was considered in poor taste. 
The medal was issued for service in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippine Islands in 1898. The small silver citation star could be awarded for gallantry. And in the next uh, series, we'll talk about what that eventually translated to. Army medal, starting on your left, was a Spanish War Service medal, and it was instituted in 1918 for service in 1898. And it was awarded to all regular or volunteer Army personnel who served during the 1898 period but did not qualify for the Spanish Campaign Medal. The Roman sword symbolized war or military strength. By being in a sheaf, it indicates National Guard service within the United States rather than in combat. And on the back of the medal was the coat of arms of the United States. And the arms of the United States denoted service in the United States as opposed to state service. The medal on your right with a center blue stripe is the Army of Cuban Occupation Medal. It was issued to soldiers who served in Cuba between 1898 and 1902. It's really an interesting medal because in the center of it is a Cuban coat of arms with the date 1898 to 1902, surrounded by the inscription Army of Occupation, Military Government of Cuba. On the back is a very interesting standard of an eagle posed on five unique standards which represent the five great wars of the United States as of 1905, the Revolution, the War of 1812, the Mexican War, the Spanish-American War, and the Philippine Insurrection. This is the Army of Occupation of Puerto Rico medal. It was issued to troops who served in Puerto Rico between August and December 1898. And it has on the front of it the same as the Spanish War Medal uh, because, well, the Army was trying to keep the cost of the front of the medal down. And so they just changed the inscription. It said, you know, Occupation of Puerto Rico. The back of the medal is the same as the Army of Cuban Occupation Medal with an uh, eagle on five standards. And the 13 stars on the bottom represent the 13 original colonies. The next medal is really interesting. It's a Philippine Campaign Medal, and it was awarded to Army personnel who served in campaigns ashore during the dates of 1899 to 1913 to quell the Philippine insurrection. In the center of the medallion is a palm tree bearing coconuts, which was often used on Roman coins and medals to record their conquest in the southern Mediterranean shores. The palm tree is the central theme on this medal, which alludes to American conquest in the Pacific and represents the tropical character of the Philippines. To the left of the palm tree, there is a Roman lamp, and to the right are scales. These symbols are encircled by the words Philippine insurrection and a date, 1899. On the back is the trophy with the eagle perched on a cannon, as on the other two medals you've just seen medal could also be authorized as silver citation star for gallantry. The medal with the red, white, and blue ribbon is really unique. It's a Philippine Congressional Medal, and it was awarded to Army personnel who volunteered to serve beyond their discharge date and were ashore in the Philippine Islands between 1899 and 1902. On the front is a military formation of a color bearer holding the United States flag accompanied by two soldiers with rifles on their shoulders all three facing the left. The flag extends between the words Philippine Insurrection and the date 1898. On the back is an inscription that reads Patriotism, Fortitude, and Loyalty with a reef. You're right with the yellow ribbon is the Army China Campaign Medal that was issued to soldiers at the Peking Relief Expedition during the Boxer Rebellion between June 1900 and May 1901. It's also eligible for a silver citation star. The medal has a five-toed Chinese dragon in the full face position, and five toes on a dragon indicates an imperial dragon, and then words, China Relief Expedition 1900. The back is the same as other regular Army campaign medals, the trophy composed of an eagle on a cannon supported by five standards. About 2,400 medals were issued. Next on your left is the Army of Cuban Pacification Medal. It was awarded to all Army personnel who served in Cuba between October 1906 and April 1909 to assist the new government during the insurrection. In the center of the medallion is the coat of arms of Cuba, supported on either side by a soldier in khaki uniform standing at parade rest. The words Cuban Pacification are on the medal, 
And the soldiers being at parade rest indicate more of a pacification rather than open and direct combat. The back of the medal is the same as other period campaign medals showing a trophy composed of an eagle perched on a cannon supported by five standards. Right is the Mexican Service Medal awarded to Army personnel who participated in engagements or expeditions into Mexico during the 10 Pacific periods between April 1914 and June 1919. In the center of the medallion is a yucca plant shown in full bloom with the mountains in the background and the words Mexican Service 1911-1914. The yucca plant symbolizes the geography of the area and the spear-like leaves allude to the raids carried out by Mexican bandits. The first of these medals, the medal number one, medal number one, was issued to General John J. Pershing. The silver citation star could be worn on the ribbon of the Mexican Service Medal, and approximately 15,000 of these medals were issued. The last two Army medals before we get to the First World War were the Mexican Border Service Medal. It was awarded to Army and National Guard troops who served on the Mexican border between January 1916 and April 1917. Uh, it was a very interesting medal because basically the design is the same as the Spanish War Service Medal with just the wording changed to read for service on the Mexican border. Here's another cost-saving application. You can see that the recipient's name is engraved on the back and the medal's number was stamped on the rim. The next medal is really kind of rare and unusual. It's the Texas Cavalry Congressional Medal, and it was awarded to two Texas Cavalry Brigades used to relieve regular Army units then serving on the Texas-Mexican border. The medal commemorates service on the Mexican border during the First World War, and it was awarded for service in those two Cavalry Brigades. The members of the unit were not eligible for the World War I Victory Medal. In the center of the medal is a bronze octagon with a blue bonnet, plant surrounded by a raised circle and surrounding a circle awarded by Congress for service in the Texas Cavalry. The back of the medal has the seal of the state of Texas, the Lone Star State. Between 1898, the Spanish-American War, and up to 1916, the Navy and Marine Corps awarded 12 different campaign medals. One I've already shown you, the Manila Bay Medal, we'll call the Dewey Medal, but let's take a quick look at the rest of them. The first medal on your left is the Spanish Campaign Medal awarded to Marine and Navy veterans for service in 1896, and it was for all personnel and naval activities of the Spanish-American War. The back of the medal on the left says United States Navy and has an eagle perched on an anchor. To the right of it is the Marine variation that says United States Marine Corps and has the same eagle on an anchor. Right is the West Indies Campaign Medal. It was awarded to both Navy and Marine Corps personnel for service in the West Indies Campaign. It was later replaced by the Spanish Campaign Medal to the left. And originally it had a yellow and red ribbon as shown, but that was changed because it was offensive to the Spanish nation. To your left is the Manila Bay or the Dewey Medal for the Navy. And it was awarded in 1898. We've already touched on it. It's unique because it was awarded to all officers and men under Commodore George Dewey's command during the defeat of the Spanish Navy at Manila Bay. To your right is the West Indies Naval Campaign of a Sampson Medal. And it was awarded to Navy and Marine Corps personnel and for participating in the naval engagements in the West Indies and on the shores of Cuba. What's interesting about both the Manila Bay Medal and the Dewey Medal, or the West Indies Naval Campaign Medal, is it has a unique one-time back, and there's not a different one for the Navy and the Marine Corps. All the other medals have different backings. On your left is an unusual medal. The Specially Meritorious Service Medal was a military decoration of the United States Navy. It was created by Joint Resolution of Congress in 1901, and it was to recognize acts of non-combat meritorious service during the Spanish-American War. Yeah, the medal still appeared on Navy charts of Predecessor up to 1942, and it's never been declared obsolete, but it's never been seen since. The red ribbon sac uh, indicates sacrifice. The arms of the cross bear the words specifically meritorious service in the date 1898 at the bottom. 
Shown to your right is the Philippine Campaign Medal awarded to both Navy and Marine Corps personnel who served in the Philippines between 1899 and 1906, either on ships or on four shore stations that were authorized. The medal on your left is very interesting. It's a China Relief Expeditionary Medal for the Navy, and it was authorized to Navy and Marine Corps personnel who served ashore in China or as crewmen on specific vessels during the period of the Boxer Rebellion. The colors of the ribbon were originally yellow and black, but it was changed to match those of the Army. And the other interesting thing is the original medal had the date on it, 1901. But the dyes were damaged after 400 medals were struck, and it became 1900 on all subsequent copies. On your right is the Cuban Pacification Medal awarded to members of the Navy and Marine Corps who served on land or aboard ship in Cuban waters during 1898 to 1902. The medallion front of the medal is really interesting. <laughs> you can uh, draw your own conclusions. And the back is usual as a service for the Navy and the United States Marine Corps. On your left with the red and black ribbon is the Nicaraguan Campaign Medal for the Navy and Marine Corps that was awarded to personnel who served ashore and on certain ships in the Nicaraguan waters between September 1906 and April 1909. It's the first of two different Nicaraguan campaign medals, so it's called the first Nicaraguan campaign medal, and it displays a volcano rising from a lake with the words Nicaraguan campaign in the date of 1812 on the edge of the medal. Uh, it's kind of confusing since it was for service at a different time, and it wasn't really authorized till 1913. The Mexican Service Medal was awarded to Navy and Marine Corps personnel who served ashore or owned ships in Mexican water during the period of 1914 to 1917. And the front of the medal has a fortress in, well, the fortress overlooking Veracruz. Uh, there is a different back for both the Navy and the Marine Corps. I just uh, inadvertently let the Marine Corps went off. My bad. The Mission Campaign Medal was awarded to members of the Navy and the Marine Corps who served ashore in Haiti or on ships in Haitian waters during the period of July to December of 1915, and it actually does have a device. In front of a medallion shows an offshore view of the Haitian Islands, and the back show the standard United States Navy and United States Marine Corps for service. The final medal that we're going to look at of the Marines and the Navy before World War I is the Dominican Campaign Medal. The ribbon is a reverse of a Haitian campaign medal, and it was awarded to Marine and Navy personnel for service ashore in Santo Domingo or on certain ships operating in Dominican waters between May and December of 1916. What's really interesting about this medal is for the first time, the back of the medal design is changed, and it now has an eagle resting on an anchor. What, well, it still says, one for the United States Navy, and one for the United States Marine Corps. It's a medal that most people did not even know existed, and it's certainly never seen, called the Certificate of Merit. But the Army Certificate of Merit was issued in a medal form between the years 1905 and 1918, and it replaced a much older Certificate of Merit issued in 1847 for valor during the Mexican-American War. Originally, it was only authorized for privates. In 1854, it was approved for sergeants, but it was never authorized for officers. In 1892, the criteria was changed to include distinguished service in action, and although awarded for non-combat heroism, it was generally awarded for gallantry in action. It could only be awarded once, and it became obsolete in July 1918 with the establishment of a Distinguished Service Cross and the Distinguished Service Medal. And we'll look at those next. At the time of the United States entry into World War I, the Medal of Honor, Certificate of Merit, and the Navy and Marine Corps Good Conduct Medals still represented America's entire inventory of personal decorations. And this raises a concern that the Medal of Honor might be cheapened by being awarded too often or that other deeds might not be recognized. So there were two new awards added. The Army Distinguished Service Cross is shown here in the original Art Deco design and the Army Distinguished Service Medal created by executive order in 1918. In 1919, the Navy created the very handsome Navy Cross and its own Distinguished Service Medal for the Navy and Marine Corps personnel is shown on your right.
If you'd like more detailed information on these awards, we have several other videos for the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps that describe these awards in detail. Known until 1947 simply as the Victory Medal, the World War I Victory Medal was awarded to any member of the United States military who served in the armed forces between April 1917 and November 1918, and also for service in European Russia from 1918 to 1919, and with the American Expeditionary Force in Siberia up to 1920. The 14 Allied nations decided on a single ribbon, but the design of the medal was left up to each nation. The American medal shows a winged victory holding a shield and a sword, with the back of the medal reading, The Great War for Civilization, curved along the top of the medal. And on the back of the medal are six stars, three on either side of a central column of seven Roman staffs wrapped in a cord. The left of the staff are listed World War I allied countries, France, Italy, Serbia, Japan, Montenegro, Russia, and Greece. And on the right side of the staff are Great Britain, Belgium, Brazil, Portugal, Romania, and China. A 316 silver citation star was authorized to be worn on the ribbon of the Victory Medal by any member of the U.S. Army cited for gallantry in action between 1917 and 1920. In 1932, that silver citation star was redesignated as a silver star medal. The Navy also had a 316th silver star that was worn on the Victory Medal, but it was for accommodation star and could not be upgraded to the silver star medal. The Army had up to 20 campaign class, and the Navy had almost as many operational class for the medals. What's interesting, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a World War I ribbon with a black Maltese cross on it. Unlike the Army, the Navy only allowed one clasp of any type to be worn on the ribbon, and members of the Marines or Medical Service Corps who served in France but were not eligible for a battle class would receive a bronze Maltese cross on their ribbon. Without going into too much detail, here is a list of the Army World War I campaign clasp, and you can see them starting on the left. And on the right, the Navy World War I service clasp, which really alluded to what type of action or duty that the naval personnel served in. Here's a look at World War I naval uniforms, and at the officer on your left, you can see they're beginning to wear ribbon bars in lieu of actual medals. These World War I Marines are shown wearing both full-size medals and ribbon bars on their uniforms. I mentioned in earlier videos, military society medals continue to grow, and they continue to be authorized by Congress to be worn on the uniform. One such medal caused a lot of problems, and it was the Grand Army of the Republic Society Medal. Basically, the problem was that Medal of Honor recipients thought that the Grand Army of the Republic Reunion Medal could be easily mistaken for a Medal of Honor, and they wanted some changes made. Initially, in 1896, the Army said, well, we'll solve the problem, we'll just change the ribbon. But that really didn't make anybody very happy. So, in 1911, an entire new redesign of the Medal of Honor with a new ribbon was authorized. The Navy also did a new ribbon in 1913, but then decided in 1917 for an entirely new design, nicknamed the Tiffany Cross, as shown on your right. <laughs> we have two excellent videos on the Medal of Honors if you'd like more detail. I would be remiss if I did not mention that returning veterans were showered by cities and states with commemorative medals when they returned home. And the Army also, while it didn't issue a Purple Heart Medal or a Wound Medal, did issue a certificate as shown on the far right. I also need to mention that in World War I, the United States authorized the acceptance of foreign decorations. Uh, for example, as shown here, the French Croix de Guerre across the war. That's a World War II version shown in the medal. But on the right-hand corner, you can see the ribbon of the World War I version. And on the right, the Belgium Cross of War. And that's the World War I version of the Belgium Croix de Guerre. <laughs> Thanks for watching our show today on the Military Medals of the United States from 1865 to 1918. Pretty interesting, I would think. And, and we wouldn't have those if it hadn't been for Teddy Roosevelt, so uh, give him a thumbs up in your history book. Also, 
look forward to part four when we'll take a look at the U.S. military medals from 1919 all the way up to 1946. And that'll cover all your granddad's medals from World War II. Okay, look forward to seeing you then on Veterans Medals Workshop. The information you saw today came from our book, Military Medals of America, available for you on Amazon, and a really great book, United States Army Medals, Badges, and Insignia, a complete guide, also on Amazon. Special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for all of their support on these videos.